Hey, it's Matt Pinfield. It's KLOS New and Approved. I'm here with the incredible musician, an amazing guy, East Coast brother of mine. Now, you know him from being in bands like Hollywood Vampires. He's, he's, I mean, he's played in so many great bands in the past, but his latest project is called Crossbone Scully, and we're really excited about this new single that he's released. So Tommy's decided to come visit us here in the studio and I'm really excited to have him. Tommy, what's going on, man? Matt, I'm so happy that I got to see you the other night. And I'm so happy that um, that you guys got me here. And uh, I'm looking at this stuff. You know, Mark Wilkinson's image right there. I'm like, oh, God, Mark Wilkinson. He loved that. Yeah, and, it uh, looks great, right? It, yeah, he's amazing. And uh, I just can't thank you enough for, like, jumping in first. You know, you and Marcy and Kayla West, like, jumping on board right away. It's It's great. I'm very grateful for that. Oh, Tommy, you know what it is? I mean, you're a great guy, great guitar player. Everything that you've done, and I just love, you're like the real rock and roll down to earth. Like, just guy, you know, again, there's something about why I think everybody who meets you loves you is you're a no bullshit guy, good heart, all the things that uh, you hope for in the rock people that you listen to, the music that you listen right. to, you know? And uh, I love that we got to give people the background about Crossbone Scully, like how this started as a side thing, there was that, you know, that the movie. Talk about the soundtrack yeah, and that uh, The animated movie we did. Uh, the actual way it started was I would just be sound checking like ACDC songs at Soundcheck. And uh, our lighting guys, one of them works for ACDC, Cosmo, and the other guy, Joel, who uh, works for like all, the, all these other huge bands. Uh, I think it was Joel, I, or Co it was one of them said, hey man, what are you doing? I was like, ah, I'm just fooling around. And uh, he's like, what do you mean you're fooling around? I was like, I'm just, I sound check ACDC. We do like Hell's, uh, what were we doing? We were doing uh, For Those About to Rock, Highway to Hell. And then uh, he looked at me and he's like, you should do this for real. And I went, eh, I used to do it back in the club days in Long Island, you know? So uh, I went back home. We had a two-week break. And I wrote the first song, which the boom went to boom. And I, and I was like listening to it. And I was like going, oh, wow. And I heard it back. And I was like, I think I could do this. And that's how... Originally, Crossbone Scully was born, and uh, and then I went on the road, and uh, I called up uh, the session guy, this guy Tommy Denander, and I had him, pl had him play guitars on it and stuff like that, and then uh, we just kept on working. You yeah, know? you did that once over the Retaliator soundtrack. Yes, that was really an cool. evil world machine that we did an animated video with uh, this kid that I found online called Riley uh, Donahue, and, uh, and it was through uh, Gina and Mark, Mark and Gina, who have this company. And uh, they did uh, the Ozzy, uh, I think, Lemmy Hellraiser. And, yeah. and I saw that. I was like, who the hell did that? I want that person. So I called him, and he's from Brooklyn. Yeah. And I was Not like, a Northeast I, guy like Exactly. Us. I was like, maybe East Coast guy to help me out. So I said, hey, Mark, I was like, how you doing? And uh, he's like, hey, what's I said, do you guys do like passion projects? And he starts laughing. And because uh, I was like, I ain't got no money to pay you like for this stuff, but maybe we could work something out. And uh, he was gracious enough to say, you know what? I got a kid. They used to check out, and then I FaceTimed with this kid as soon as I saw him. I was like, I knew who he was the kid to do it, and then he worked on it, and then I had uh, Johnny be the... And Al, I got to tell you, I don't mean to go off but script, but Alice Cooper helped write a lot of the, the, the stuff. Like, he'd always... I'd throw the ideas at Coop, and Coop would be like, all right, well, what, what is Scully coming back to Earth for? I was like, he's coming back to kill all the rotten people, you know what I mean, and yeah. save the good ones. He's like, yeah, but he's like... We've heard that before. He says, but every major motion picture or anything has a love story in it. He goes, that's what you need to think about. And I was like going, oh, man, he's right. God damn, how am I going to do this now? And all of a sudden, then I thought about it, and then I tied it in where I was like, okay. So Scully and Alice was like, Scully's got to be this like guy who's got like this MacGyver duct tape spaceship, but he likes coming to Earth. He's a shapeshift. We don't know if he's God or what. And then I started putting this, I would write things down all the time. All right, he's coming back to Earth to hang out. He's going to hang out with chicks. He's going to party, you know. And so it happens that these deities planted this woman deity on Earth who could see him for what he is. And they said, you need to mate with him so we can find the one. So yeah. that's how I tied it in. It's almost like Star, it's like all of these movies. So at the end of the movie, Scully, you know what I mean? He makes love to this chick named Piper. He tells her if there's any problem, you take the lock that's around his neck and the key and you insert it and I'll come and save you. But he's time traveling. So he left. It's 14 years later, he comes back, he finds out he's got a kid. 
He's like, hey, who? And the kid's like, who's that? And it happens to be Scully. And then uh, at the end of the video, when the kid, the uh, movie, when, the, when he put the lock in the key, the kid opens up and he's the one who's the savior. This is thing one. This, yeah. Because there's a lot of episodes we're doing, and Johnny was great. He helped out a lot with the script. And we're talking about Johnny Depp, yes, of course. Yes, yeah, exactly. Sorry. And uh, he's a sorcerer. Because I said yeah. to him, I was like, dude, you got to be the evil guy, man. And he was like, I could do that. And I said, Alice, you got to be the bringer of light. You got to be the father of Scully and, you know, the sorcerer who are brothers who don't know that. And one wants to destroy the world. One wants to party and maybe destroy it, but he doesn't want to destroy it. And then you have Joe Perry, who's the big bad bone crusher, who's like the muscle. And then I got Nikki Six, who's like the crooked crow. He's the all-seeing eye of everything. And then Kane Roberts came in, and he's the alpha watchman. He's the dog. Cheryl Cooper, Alice's wife, is Madame Guillotine. And then my son is actually his name's Kid, who I wanted to call him Kid, but my wife would let me do that. So in this movie, I can call him Kid. And uh, she's Piper. So I put everyone in it together, you know. That's fantastic. And Mark someone- Wilkinson, sorry. He's, he's, yeah, who did he, the image. He, he's Sir Bloodwing. He's the, uh, you know, he's the apprentice of Johnny Depp, of so the sorcerer. So you conceived this movie, this graphic novel, this completely cool fantasy story that uh, fans of fantasy and superheroes right. and video games, anything, would, would really appreciate. What I do love, too, is you deciding that you're going to start recording these songs and one of the most amazing things to me about, you know, Boom went the boom, and I heard some other tracks that people will hear later on. Right. Um, I thought they were great, and it was just so exciting. But the I, one of the biggest things in rock news to me is you've got Mutt Lang, who produced some of our favorite records by Def Leppard and ACDC, All of our to come out, of re- come out of well, retirement to work with you, which is like people have been trying to pay him to do that for so long and get him to do something. But... Tommy Hendrickson gets him to do it, like he, because he, he's only going to do projects he wants to work on. Talk to me about that experience and how that happened. Uh, that's funny, because uh, anyway, I was uh, working on stuff in L.A. right at, at Johnny's place, Johnny Depp Studio, and uh, Ross Halfin was there, and he heard it. And that's when I was like going, because Ross doesn't like everything either. Ross, oh, no, I've heard Ross talk yeah. about songs and bands that he doesn't like. Obviously, he's still tight with Jimmy Page yeah, and Zeppelin and everybody he worked with. So Ross really, he liked it. He's like, I really like this. And I went, wow, if he likes this, maybe this might be cool. So I went back, because I had everything finished. And uh, and I was mixing it. And I went back to Switzerland, and I called up Tommy Denander, and I, because Tommy actually knew Mutt. And I said to him, just jokingly, thinking that, I've never had. I said, "Why don't you call up your buddy Mutt and send this to him?" And uh, he did. And next thing I know, I got this call from Mutt Lang on my phone, which is to me is like, I hung up. I hung up and cried because I was like, "Going, oh, this is real." Did you first you know, would go? Hey, hey I, who, I didn't know who, it was him. Which one of my friends is playing a trick? Yeah, that's what right I thought. Now. Who's joking? Who's like punking me? Because yeah. it's like it was on my birthday, you know. Yeah. And uh, he said, I, "I got this 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 record from Tommy, and uh, I think there's something here." And I was like. Really? Because, you know, I this guy's like, he's like, he's up here, man, you know? Yeah, what he did with ACDC, what he did with Def Leppard. I mean, those, they, it was Shania can't Twain, be the cars, yes, the cores, yeah. Billy Ocean, Brian yeah. Adams. I yeah. mean, dude, it's like the list, like, I'll yes. call him, like, would you, and he always says, Mutt, he's like, it's about the team. He's like, it's always about the team. And, uh, and w- w- when he said that he wanted to fool around with the song, I was like, okay. And I hung up. I cried like a baby because I was like, "Oh my God, this is unbelievable." I don't, yeah. I don't know if this will ever happen, but I'm just happy that I finally felt like, "Wow, my hero, man, he he thinks I got something," you know. And uh, a week later, I had this track, and uh, the boom went to boom, and I never forget it. I was like sitting there looking at it at the email, and I was like going, "Oh, I don't want to listen to it. This is gonna be tough." You know, because I was so scared and, and insecure, you know what I mean? And uh, I said to my wife, I said, let me, I need about an hour. I got to listen to this thing like 50 times. All I remember, I put the headphones on. I just went 10 seconds and I went, headphones down. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. This is why this is not lying. And I listened to it like 50 times. And I call him back and I go, hey man, uh, this is why you are the best fucking producer who's ever lived. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's like, let's face it. Who else has that many diamond selling records, you know, in the, uh, the days of selling CDs and records? He's just uh, 
He's an amazing, amazing talent. And, seeing that love and having that for you, and you being so open and you know talking to us about it right now, like God, we all go through that insecurity. We're not really sure of different course. things in our lives. That's who we are. You know, we're just human beings. We're human, exactly. And um, but I love that fact that that really to come through like that. It's just it's such an incredible story. He, it proves those stories still do happen when people love something or feel a connection to it. That they're willing to work on. Yeah. And that's one of the best things. And you know what's cool about him, Matt, is like he does not want any credit. He doesn't like me to talk about him. And I and I always say, I try. How can I not? I try not to. Yeah. You know what I mean? And having Phil Collin play on Boom Went to Boom. Yeah. And Phil had no about- idea Mutt was involved. It was, yeah. It's really Let's cool. Let's talk about that you know? story, too, because, yeah. I, I, you know, I love this story about the single, uh, with the Boom Went to Boom. And uh, when... You know, Phil Collin, how he got involved with it, because obviously, you know, Phil having, you know, a lot, owing a lot of his career, you know, to um, to the great band that he was in, Def Leppard, and still in, of course, and, you know, but those records that he did with Mutt Lang, it's just an incredible story about how you put that back together. Can we talk about it? Uh, well, it was just one of those things that was really like, it was, I was fortunate enough that Phil heard the song. And I sent it to him. I didn't say anything. I said, hey, Phil, I was like, would you be cool to play a solo on the song? Because the label wanted me to do features with people. And I was like, if I'm going to do features with people, I want to do features with my heroes. And your friends that you love. Exactly. So I was like, let me call up Phil. Let me call up Nikki Six. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, And Nikki was great because Nikki was the one who said, Tommy, this is a great idea. You need to do this because it's like having a ballad on the record in the 80s features is that w- what's happening today. So I was like, oh, let me call Phil. So I called Phil. I said, hey, Phil. I said, listen to this track. I was like, see if you like it. If not, it's cool. I'm your bro. You know what I mean? You don't got to play on it if you don't like it. So he called me back. He's like, I'll have a feed Thursday. And I had it Thursday. And I went, oh, my God. I heard it. And I was like, it sounds like Phil Collin. So yeah. I send it over to Mutt and Ole. And I go, uh, here you go. And Mutt was like, this is incredible. I said, he says, who played it? I said, uh, Phil. And he's like, Phil, he's just, did you say anything? I was like, I didn't say nothing because he doesn't want me to talk about stuff. So I don't. So he's like, let Phil know, you know, and I did. And Phil was like, oh, my God, dude, I didn't know it was because he knows I could sing all those. But ba- I try. Well, not that I can. I try and do Mutt Lang as best as I can, you yeah. know, when I'm singing. And uh, and Phil thought it was me doing Mutt. But it was actually Mutt, vo- like those Mutt Lang vocals, that sound, when I had my voice and his together, that, that's my, I, I mean, I saw, I, I, really, I cried so many times on this record because it's like, you listen to it and you go, oh my God, that's the sound, you know what I mean? That's that sound that I've been trying to get. Yeah. And here's a guy who's just so giving and, and loving and, and just so generous where I'm like, you know, it's... It, Unbel- I, I don't know. I, I, I don't like to talk about it because he doesn't like me to talk about anything, you yeah. know? But all I have to say is just wonderful things about him, and, and I can't thank him enough. I can't. I think it's fantastic, and it's, you know, just the fact that I've heard these songs, and it's great, and it's it makes sense to me because obviously the records that he worked on, the bands that, you know, he's worked with are two of your favorite bands, Def Leppard and ACDC. I mean, those two... You know, those two, uh, I mean, the Bon Scott years, the Brian Johnson yeah. years, you know. I love, we love them all, right? They're so good. And, um, you know, and I just got to say that I think it's great. Let's talk about your, your the things you're going to be releasing. Because there's going to be a full album, say 2024. It's coming right. up. Correct. But um, I know there's these, it, what's really cool is there are some colored vinyl 7-inch 45 singles yes. being released for vinyl fans out there. Yep. And I just think that that is is a really cool thing for guys like me, who's a total rock and roll geek, music geek. I love that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Who so, doesn't? Yeah. So tell me about that. It's going to be like uh, there's going to be three parts uh, where they all connect with the record, right? Is that what it is? And and it's like there's going to be three versions: thing one, thing two, thing three, thing four. So they can make a full record. Yeah. And Mark Wilkinson is the guy, and uh, Paul at the label, who've uh, and Scott have been putting that together. Um, and it's and it's a limited edition, too. I think they're only printing like 300, right, or something like that? Yeah, yeah, the, first one. yeah, yeah the, the first one. Yeah, the first one, yeah. So it's going to be really cool. Limited. Dude, I mean, when you see it, I mean, I look at that and I go, every time I look at Scully when Mark Wilkinson did that, it's like it's amazing that, like even Mark Wilkinson, you know, it's like having him being part of this, It's that's another guy he's hard to get. 
you know? Yeah. And he heard the music, and he right away was like, how'd you get Mutt Lang? And I was yeah. like, how do you know? He's yeah. like, because I know. I'm a huge fan. And I was yeah. like, it was, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I, I don't know, dude. Honestly, it's like, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of people, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can never take the credit. Because it's like a lot of people who've helped me get this far. And uh, the only thing I can take credit for is that I will not take, you know, any days off. And I want to make great records. And uh, and I work harder than anyone. While everyone else is sleeping, I'm working. Yeah, and I love that about <laughs> you, man. I, I think it's great, Tommy. Yeah. And, I mean, just look at what the things that you've done, too. And you've been busy with Hollywood Vampires, yeah. too. And with Alice. Yep. I mean, you know, you, you know, look, at, I mean, I was a kid. Since, I mean, when I was nine, ten years old, I heard, you know, School's Out, and then, of course, went, got Love It to Death, 19, you know, like, went back yeah. and bought the records. Huge fan for life of yep. Alice's. And, you know, I just love that he has this situation where he treats everybody in his band and crew with so much love. And, yes. And that's kind of, like, when you work with guys like that, and then you work with a bunch of friends in Hollywood vampires that are just... Guys friends, that are, they're oh, no more heroes. Were you like, oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm staying at the Four Seasons tonight. Yeah. I'm flying on a private jet. So, with, with Joe Perry dude, and Alice Cooper. And you know what I do, Johnny Matt, Depp? with that? I'm sitting there, I'm going, live in the moment, enjoy it while you can. Because you're going to be at the Double Tree in about three weeks. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Oh, yeah. Well, I love that, but it's still, it, it's, it's great. so genius. It's isn't amazing. It? It's incredible. And these are the guys, let's face it, all those guys there. I mean, Johnny, of course, you're a huge fan of his acting. Yeah. Like I've always been. But, you dude. know, uh, Joe Perry and Alice Cooper are two, you know, that was you my youth for me. Those me too. Guys, you me know? too. Um, yep. And so it, it's just such a beautiful thing. And the fact that you were so involved in deciding which covers to do and from the very get-go. And having right? a great band around you. I mean, like having like Glenn Sobel on the drums, what a, Buck it, Johnson and Chris it, Wise. I yeah. mean, dude. You know, Chris Wise is amazing. And I love Glenn Sobel. He's just a killer drummer. Every night, every night, I, I, like when we rehearse that stuff, I always said those guys never have to worry about it because we got it. Even if yeah. Alice goes off script or someone goes yeah. off, we know exactly where to come in. We've been playing with each other for years. And when you got a band like that and you don't have to worry, it's great, you know? Can we just talk about two? Yeah. When you're standing, when you're playing there with Alice, uh, how crazy it is, how great he still is live. Like, he sounds great. He looks great. He's a showman. I'm like, I go, people just, this is the guy who wrote the book on it, and he's still, you know, I, every time I see him, I'm just in just amazement when I see this I've play. learned so much from Cooper, you know what I mean, <laughs> watching Coop. I've learned, like, everything that I've learned, like, to be a singer, like in Crossbow and Scully, like, I'm not playing guitar, yeah. and I wanted to find young musicians and empower these young musicians and make them, you know, because I wanted to do what Alice and Ozzy did, where they find a bunch of unknown kids. Yeah, like when you found uh, yeah, Sam Colvin, right, who's so Sam, I've been watching Sam for, like, I don't know, 10 years now. Sam's like, amazing. Dude, he's great. Playing with his band Butterside, yeah. and then playing, he plays with Play, Dorothy yeah. and everybody else. Exactly. Butterside are great, and he plays with yeah. them, and he's, you know... He crushes it. Yeah. So but, I was so happy when I walked into Johnny's studio and I saw him standing yeah, there exactly. with you. Yep. And I was like, Sam, what's what up? What the hell are you doing here? Yeah, oh, Sam, yeah. Sam, yeah. Sam, Sam is great. But I found this girl named Anna Cara like, on Instagram. That's you got to tell me about. Yeah, she's 19 years old. Uh, she just turned 20. I've known her since she's 19. I've been Because fo I always follow guitar players, girl bi guitar players, girl bass players. I follow a lot of people. I like everybody's stuff and stuff. And I was watching this kid all the time doing her tutorials. And I was like, wow, this kid, like, the vibrato. When I heard her just doing this stuff. And she wasn't selling anything but guitar. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she wasn't doing, like, the typical, let me play a lick and be like, you know, yeah. like none of that stuff. Yeah, not, and I not was like going, facial poses. No, and I was like going, who is this kid? So it, I it watched. It was the purity of it. Exact, there's, there's a soul in it with her. And, and when I saw, I saw that, I went, oh, my God, that's the first girl I'm going to call to yeah. play guitar in this thing. And uh, I reached out to her. I watched for about six to eight months. And finally, I sent her a message. I said, hey, I, said, I just want to let you know what you're doing is amazing. And you're a, you're a phenomenal guitar player. And I said, don't take this the wrong way, but you play like a 59-year-old man. Yeah. I was like, your vibrato is crazy. That's the greatest compliment in the world, though. It means somebody's been playing a lot. I bet she was, I bet she was floored by that. She was. She called me up, <laughs> and uh, she, and she sent me a message back. Thank you so much. And I said, hey, I'd like to FaceTime with you. So I called her up, and uh, I said, I got to talk to your parents because I wanted to talk to her parents because she was like 19. Yeah. And because I always wanted to know that. 
you know, I'm calling up because this kid's a phenomenal guitar player. So yeah. I said, Steve, That's... Steve's a dad. I said, Steve, I go, how did this kid know how to play this stuff? And he goes, and they're from Newcastle, this little village. He yeah. goes, Tom, you know, I, I put this stuff in front of Anna, you know, Tony Iommi, you know, uh, Gary Moore, you know, Richie Blackmore, Angus Young, blah, blah, blah. And he's naming all the names. I'm going, these are the guys that I, I grew up with. How did you? He's like, and she just took to him. And I went, this is the best learning experience you could have could have ever gave this kid. And the mom's in the like, oh, and dude, she is so like she's a superstar. This kid, I'm telling you, yeah. she's one of those kids that with the first video we did, she's never done anything. She's never been in a band. She's never played a video. So we call her up. Like I even said to her, I was like, Anna, I might call you up one day. You got to be show ready. And she's like, yeah. uh, What's show ready mean? I go. <laughs> It means you better be show ready yeah. because if I call you up, we might have a gig. We might have something. I don't know what's going to happen, but just be ready. Yeah. So we're getting ready to do like one minute. Nita's doing her video with uh, Dorothy and the song I wrote. Victorious. Yes, Victorious. And uh, next thing you know, she invites me down to the shoot. I meet Vicente and I say, Vicente, I call up Scott and I go, hey, man, I go, you think it's crazy if we try and do a Vicente's video? Vicente's a good dude, by Great the way. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Work with Butterside too. Speaking yes. of Sam, all there's all stuff. he's connected to all the rock, Everything. and that's why I've been in a couple of those videos. Of course, there are crazy stuff that yeah. I have. So it's been fun, man. But I like Vicente. Didn't so you, right, yeah, Vicente, he's amazing, and, and he, victorious. You, uh, yeah, of course, exactly, wrote, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. You've been, you've been writing songs for a lot of other. Tell me about some of the stuff that you've done as far as outside of writing uh, for other people. I, I really stopped. That song's been around, Matt, since I don't know, like twelve years old. Yeah. I wrote it actually with Steve Harris's daughter. Wow. Yeah, oh, no kidding. exactly. Yeah. When she was singing. And yeah. uh, I've always said, uh, Lauren yeah. Harris. Yeah. And uh, we were working, it was when Dark Shadows, and we, it was like, that had to be 2011 maybe. Yeah. And I always thought that song was special because I was write, writing it to empower women. Because yeah. my mother was a single mom. We grew up on welfare. My mother was the father. My mother was everything, dude. We know, Everything we had, my mother got for us. And I always, whenever I'm thinking of songs i'm always thinking of powerful women you know what i mean and that's even with scully every song i write it's powerful either it's scully or it's woman you know yeah, what i mean it's, and, a, it's, a, it's about empowerment and, and exactly. the respect of that power and when i and when i did that with lauren i was like we're gonna do this we're gonna do that blah 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 and that song was sitting down sitting around for so long till finally i said to nita when she was doing a record she's like you got any songs i go I got a lot of songs. And I said, but you should really check out this one. And she did. And uh, thanks to Nita and Josh, I got to tell you, they, they brought it to life. You know what I mean? And they I really can't thank did. them enough for that. And Dorothy, who fucking crushed it. Sorry, what a great voice she has. No, Dude. we can believe it. Um, Seriously, great. I mean, Dorothy's amazing. We amazing. love her. Absolutely. I mean, you know, so the, and Nita is a machine yep. as well. She's Nita's a force. A, yeah. I'm glad. I'm really happy for her and Josh getting engaged. And yeah, that right. Still. It's yep. great news all the way around. Yeah. But, Tommy, you know, I got to tell you, this is exciting. I really appreciate you bringing in Boom Went to Boom is such a great single. I'm glad we can support it here on the show, on the station. Really happy to have you here. You will be back. You know what I mean? Matt, when you get some time. Thank you and KLOS seriously so much. And I'm not just, I really do mean it because it's like to have people, because we've been sitting on this record for almost five years now. And finally, when you start seeing light, and as Scott would always say, let's build it brick by brick. We're building the wall. You know what I mean? And that's why we've been doing all of these things like the comic book, the animation, the movie, the music, the records, and Jew, everything, dude. Because Mark Wilkerson said to me, he's like, remember one thing, Tommy, Iron Maiden makes more money in beer than they do in music. And I was like going, oh, man, he's right. You know? Yeah. So when I take, when everyone tells me these things, I listen to them. Yeah. You know, and I, I take it all in and I say, OK, how can we do this and build this thing? So it's this movement of like and also the misfits of the universe. Yes, it's like crossbone scully is for like every it's for the, the broken the unbroken the outsider it's for, it everything. is it's for everyone out there it's for yeah. people who are struggling like all of us mental health everything dude which is a positive thing and you can be anything you want in scully's world because we're not here to look at you and criticize or put you down or keep you out of our circle we welcome everyone in scully's world you yeah. know you do, and it's great. Man, I really appreciate having you here, Tommy. Thank you. It's awesome. Congratulations on the new single. We're looking forward to uh, supporting all of them. And when the album drops in 2024. Thank you so we'll much, We'll be seeing you way before that. Tommy Hendrickson, everybody. So good to have him here on the show. 
I'm Matt Pinfield. Kayla West, new and approved. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll be back with you soon.